thank you for that. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Gil, and um, ah, they're here. <laughs> ES modules and Node.js, and I am pumped up, uh, really, really pumped up. First of all, what are ES modules? Just so we're on, on, on the same page here, we have CommonJS, which is what the module system was in Node.js until now, and, and it's still working. You know, you, you have your module.exports.add, and, and, and that's how you import something, like export something. In ESM, you're using syntax, export function, this and that. And to import in CJS, in CommonJS, in the, the old node system, which is called CommonJS, I'll, I'll, I'll make it CJS, it's require, and in ESM, it's syntax, import from. So today we're going to talk about ESM, migrating, and lots of other stuff. But a little story first. On March 2020, on the other side of COVID, yeah, remember that? It was the 3rd of March, I gave this talk at Node TLV in Tel Aviv, a day after we got quarantined. So like, you know, if the, if the, if the conference was one day too late, I would never have given this talk. And, 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 and here we are, like, well, we're not after COVID, unfortunately, but in some ways we've gotten used to it. Uh, my first offline conference is then, it's an amazing offline conference, and I'm giving the same talk. It's like a full circle thing. It was a good talk. I had good vibes. I had lots of people interested. Something was missing. In the end, I had lots of memes and lots of jokes and everything, but in the end, it was a laundry list of features of how ESM works in Node.js. Something was missing till yesterday. I landed in Zagreb. I landed in Zagreb, which is three, three hours and 15 minutes from Zadar. And this wonderful driver took me there, and we talked, well, most of the way I, I slept for an hour. I want to zoom in on one part of that drive. It's this part. There's this tunnel, five-kilometer tunnel between, between two totally different landscapes. One landscape is fucking Switzerland. It's green. It's lush. It's beautiful. Really? I was like, oh my God, little villages here and there. No cows, but uh, I don't know why. Uh, and on the other side, I'm going out and, oh my God, this is Israel. This is Mediterranean, like shrubbery, rocks and everything. Also beautiful, but totally different. And I got it. I will explain ES modules in Node.js, not by a laundry list of features, but by explaining the tunnel we're going through Moving from old common JS to new ESM, I will explain that tunnel. What are the differences? And through this, I will explain the features of ESM because we are moving through that tunnel. And a year and a half was crazy in terms of the changes and and how people are starting to migrate. Look at this. Node Fetch, which is a very popular library in Node, has moved to be ESM only six days ago. Uh, D3, which is very popular, is ESM only. Titus uh, and Sindre Sorhus, which by themselves have about 2,000 packages, have said that by the end of this year, those packages will be ESM only. And, this, and, and there are two, well, this has consequences. This is Dominique de Nicola, who wants to use Node Fetch, and suddenly it's ESM only, and he can't use it in his common JS code. This has real consequences. And there are two tunnels that cause this change, that cause these problems. First of all, we'll talk about how Node.js and browser ESM are compatible between them. And, but that means that they are incompatible. Node.js ESM is incompatible with what is called front-end ESM, and I'll explain all that. The other one is the incompatibility or the, in, the difficult to be interoperable between CJS and ESM. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the solutions. Those are the tunnels we'll be going through. And you, if you're using Node.js, you will be going through these tunnels in the coming years. So we'll talk about that. 
So basically, I arrived at the hotel, and instead of going to the sea and swimming pool and, and whatever, I just spent the whole day rewriting the talk. It's a completely new talk. Uh, so here we are. It's not, ah, we're here. Uh, ES modules in Node.js. It's, ah, they're here. ES modules in Node.js, the reboot. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm a senior front-end architect, really old. Started my computer career in 1987. Uh, love being a developer, that's what I love to do. But we're not hiring in Croatia, so who gives a fuck? So let's go, we have a lot to cover. Let's first talk about browser compatibility and something that is starting to be called full modules. First of all, what's the big deal? We've been using ESM for years, you're saying. What are you talking about? We're using ESM. Well, yes and no. Where, first of all, where I've been using ESM, we've been using ESM a lot in the front-end world. We're, and they pioneered using ESM. And we've also been using in Node.js. But both environments did not support ESM a few years back. Browsers did not support ESM. Node.js did not support ESM until like two years ago, a year ago. What, how? How does that work? How do we use ESM in environments that don't support it? And the answer is transpilation. Transpilation is where you take some code and you transpile it to different code that does work in that environment. And two major transpilers supported ESM. If you're using TypeScript, you've used ESM. If you're using Babel, you've used ESM. And what do they do when they see an import from, which is ESM code? They transpile it when you're using Node to require. That's the only thing they do. They're changing the import from to a require. That's what Babel and TypeScript do when you're using Node.js with them. And this means, and this is important, that the semantics of import when you're using Babel TS are the exact semantics of Node.js require. What do I mean? First of all, how does Node.js require some file? Let's say dot slash my utils. A lot of people don't know it, but it goes through this pipeline and searches for files. First of all, it searches for my utils, no extension. Doesn't find that usually because we like our extensions, okay? And it searches for myutils.js. If it finds that, we're done. But if it's not, it searches for myutils.json. If it finds that, we're done. If not, it looks for a folder with index.js inside it. If not, it looks for a folder with package.json and looks for the main field and goes there. And if not, boom, no file. Crazy. But that is how require works in Node.js. So Babel TS basically replicated those semantics of loading, of, of importing a file. This is now called, these semantics are now called full modules. What, are, what is full? It's French for false. Not sure how it is in Croatian. Uh, what about the front end world? This is Node.js. It transpiled from import to require. What about the front end world? There's no require there, I wish. What, do, what, what, do we, what does the front end world do? It uses bundlers like Webpack and Rollup to bundle them, and they, find, they use the same semantics. So when you're doing an import from myutils, it's going to look for that file in exactly the same order, in exactly the same algorithm as Node.js does. They replicated the same semantics. Why are they full? Why is it called full? Why are they false? Well, something curious happened on the way. Browsers started implementing natively. Browsers started implementing ESM2. You, you, I don't know if you know that, but if you have a, like a regular HTML file with a regular script source, you can just import and it'll work. What does the browser do? It will HTTP fetch myutils, the file myutils, get that, and load it just like, like an ESM file. That, that's, that, it will just work. No need to transpile, no need to bundle, it will work. This is native ESM, and that is all the browser does. It doesn't go through all that laundry list of look for this and look for that and look for this and look for that. Why? Good question. But. That means they usually won't import dot slash myutils. You will usually import dot slash myutils dot js because that is how your files look like. The browser will not add that extension for you. Browsers basically rejected 
the Node.js semantics of let's look here and let's look there because browsers can't do that. They need to be performant. That is the reason. They threw away the Node.js semantics and good for them. This is a clean break. Consequences are, are, are very ironic. Browsers will not take front-end full-module code and just use it natively. You can't take what you call front-end code that uses ESM and just run it natively in the browser. And it's ironic because Babel TS really wanted to emulate something knowing that someday browsers will use ESM and now they just guessed wrong. They, you guessed it using Node.js semantics and not browser semantics. So now Node.js ESM is wanting to, to, be, to use native ESM. So what semantics should it use? Should it use the full modules, the Node.js require semantics? If it does, it would be incompatible with browser ESM. But if it does browser ESM, then it would be incompatible with 99.9% .9 of the NPM packages out there. So what does it do? What would you do? Well, I'll tell you what they did. They chose browser ESM. They chose to do a clean break and not implement the old semantics because the Node.js working group thinks that browser compatibility in the end for the future is important and they are willing to have a tunnel of five kilometers for us to go through for that. And this creates a rift between old ESM code and Node.js ESM code. And my company uses like Node.js ESM and uses front-end code and sometimes there's a clash there. We, we figure it out, but sometimes you get little incompatibilities. But this is the right way forward. Better compatibility for, with front-end. But why is front-end back-end so important? Why is the compatibility important? There's back-end code, there's front-end code, and, and, and the, never the twain shall meet. And the answer is, a lot of testing code today, when you're using React testing library, when you're using Jest to test your front-end code, where is the code running? Is it running in the browser? No, it's running in Node.js. So Jest does a lot of magic to make it appear as if it's running in a browser, but it's not, it's running in Node.js. So a lot of front-end code is running in Node.js, and what we want is to like bridge the two worlds. And by the way, the, we have to thank these two people, or tools, one is Jest, which made it popular, and the other is Ken Dodds, which you heard in the keynote this morning. And the front-end community is starting to agree. It's starting to agree that full modules are a thing of the past, important, they'll still support it, obviously, for years to come, but they want to align the semantics. ES, they want to align browser ESM semantics, Node.js ESM semantics, and Webpack roll-up, etc. semantics. So yes, we are going to a world where there's full browser and Node.js compatibility in terms of a module system, and this is important. But what about bare specifiers? What is bare specifiers, first of all? Instead of doing dot slash something like import from Mocha, this is bare specifiers, where you just specify the package name. Does that work in Babel, CommonJS, TypeScript? Yes, it's exactly the same semantics, except that it searches in node modules. So it searches in node modules for Mocha file. If it does, finds that, it uploads that. Otherwise, Mocha.js, Mocha.json, etc. Usually, it will find a folder with package.json, which is the package we NPM installed. And if it doesn't, it goes up one folder and starts again. Very, very difficult semantics. Definitely not something a browser works on, but how does this work in browsers? How do bare specifiers work in browsers? The answer is easy. They don't. Browsers just look at bare specifiers and say, we don't know what that is. I can't HTTP that. I don't know what to do. We're not supporting that. Uh, so how does Node.js ESM implement bare specifiers? And the answer is easy. Let's do it the Node.js way because there's no problem of backward compatibility, of, of compatibility with browsers. But... It doesn't work in browsers today, but the future shows that it will work. It's actually using something called import maps, which are available in Chrome today. And my guess is in one year, it will be available in Firefox and Safari. Uh, you can also support bare specifiers. How does this work? 
So let's say you have a script and it imports from MJS example, which is a bare specifier. You add a script type equals import map, which specifies that MJS example is this file. And this import map can be generated by npm install because npm install knows all about the packages and whatever. So you can generate that import map during your npm install and then just script source it into your browser and you get full compatibility with Node.js and browsers because inside the packages, all the imports are compatible. You say dot slash whatever. Between packages, npm install will generate the import map, you script source it, and boom, theoretically, you can npm install everything, run it in development with no webpack or tooling whatsoever, plain JavaScript. This is something that for me has like been a dream because I believe tooling today is too complicated. We need to simplify, get back to the basics, and this will help us. So, yep. To recap this part. Node.js ESM is closer to browser ESM. It's different. It doesn't implement the required semantics. This creates a break between old front-end ESM and new Node.js ESM. And front, in the long run, this is good. And the front-end tooling is starting to like, agree and start you know, mending that rift. Next, we said we had two tunnels. So the first tunnel is how Node.js implemented the semantics for loading a file and agreed with browsers and not with the old way. The second tunnel is ESM asynchronicity and the problem of CJ, common JS interoperability. There's a rule. ESM can import a common JS package. So import from Mocha works even if Mocha is common JS. It'll work. But, and this is the big problem, a CJS file cannot require an ESM file. It just cannot. So ESM can import from a CJS package, but a CJS cannot import or require from ESM. It's, it's one way. In some ways, ESM can do whatever it wants, but CJS is crippled. Okay? This means that if I have a package that used to be CJS and now it's moved to ESM only, if all the code there is only ESM, no JS ESM, you can't, it's difficult to use in CJS. And that is why Dominique de Nicola was very, very frustrated with node fetch. He said, wait, they moved to ESM only and I can't use it in my regular old Node.js code. First of all, he, he can. It's not easy. A CJS file can still use a wait import to import an ESM, but that means that it's asynchronous. You can't just use, like, switch the require to, to an await import because await needs an async function around it, and that makes it hard. So it, it works, but it's very inconvenient. Why is there this asymmetry? And let's do a, a little and, and understand how ESM and CJS work when loading files. And to do that, let's see how CJS first loads uh, modules. Let's say we have like a top level module loads another module and it, uh, and it loads two others, like require, require, require. Let's see how this works. So it loads this file and finds the require. Require is just a function. So it runs require. And what require does is synchronously load the, the next JavaScript file and starts to run it. Run it, finds the require, require synchronously loads the next one and runs the console log. And then the next require does the import, etc., etc., etc. Now let's see ESM. ESM is a little bit different. First of all, there are two phases. The first phase is the bind, the load parse bind phase. It first reads the file, it doesn't execute it, finds the imports because it's syntax, so it can like find the imports without running the code, and loads the next file. Again, finds the files. Oh, and binds, binds the exports and the imports. I forgot that. Finds the next file, loads that, parses it. Nothing is running yet. Next file, parses, binds. Nothing is running yet. Now it's loaded all the tree, and now it can start running. So it runs from the bottom up. 
uh, in order, I think it's called, in tree traversal. It runs that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. Totally different from CJS. Interesting, but when it's loading that file, those two, it can load, parse, and bind them concurrently. So this whole thing is asynchronous. It's not a synchronous require, it's asynchronous. So in some ways, it's much faster than the require, which is synchronous. So loading and parsing in ESM is asynchronous, and in CJS, it's synchronous. In ESM, uh, uh, let's skip the other one. In ESM, because it's asynchronous, if you're doing an await import, your browser is not stopping because it's all asynchronous. But if you're doing a require, during that require, your browser stops because it's totally synchronous. And we'll talk about top-level await in, in, one, in a sec because ESM supports top-level await because it is asynchronous and CJS doesn't. Oh, top-level await. What is top-level await? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a godsend. I mean, it sounds like a little feature, but I've used it so, much, so many times, I can't think of doing it again. If I want to do a read file in Node.js, this is an async operation. So yeah, I can do read file sync, but I don't want to. I want to use async code. Uh, I can do that in ESM. I can just await it top level. I don't need to wrap it in an async. So this is top level await, and you can see it is used in one place to read a file and parse it, and in another place to do it differently between Windows and Linux, for example. So that works, top level await. It works today in Node.js. And, and it's a wonderful feature. It's, it sounds corny, it sounds nothing, but once you start using it, you can't go back. So, and then this is available only in ESM because ESM is asynchronous. So ESM can import CJS. CJS can import ESM, but difficult when it makes people like Dominique de Nicola very frustrated. And I can explain that. This is because ESM is async and CJS is sync. So I can import a CJS because it's synchronous, but a, a synchronous CJS cannot import an async ESM. And this gives ESM top level await. And with, this means that when packages are starting to migrate, and they are starting to migrate, you will have more and more difficulty using those packages as time goes by. Let's talk about the exports field because it's important for interop and understanding how this tunnel works. Because we've seen the two tunnels. We've seen the problems with, between four modules and ESM and between ESM and CJS. But how, how will this work in the real world if we do want to interoperate? And the answer is, we've seen the interop problems and the Node.js group were aware of them. They're not like complete idiots. Uh, so they added something to Node.js that enables interop between CJS and ESM. Let's see how. Remember main and package JSON? Everybody knows main and package JSON. It's, it's when you're building a package, it's what the entry point is to that package. So when you import something from a package, it will actually load main.js. That is how main works. But nobody's stopping us from backdooring. If I want to take a package and, and find an, an internal file inside it, it will work. Okay? And a lot of people are frustrated because they don't want other, uh, other developers to like touch their uh, internal files and, and then generate awkward forward compatibility problems. So until now, they had no way. Anybody could backdoor. So introducing exports. Exports is a replacement for main. Main still works, but in exports, you can specify that the main entry point is main.js, but dot slash world is actually dot slash world.js. You can specify different entry points. So if you import hello from package, it will load main.js. And if you import from package slash world, it will load from world.js. So you can specify entry points in a more explicit manner. But we cannot backdoor. Once you have an exports in the package JSON, backdooring is not allowed by uh, Node.js. You definitely can await import and look, work around it, but yeah. you know, this is Node.js, you can work around anything. But in, in normal ways, you can't backdoor. So 
exports is, is like this great feature, uh, but there's more. And, and that the more is the more interesting thing. There's conditional exports. What if I want, like, what, what if node fetch, instead of going ESM only, said we'll support both require and import, both CJS and ESM? What if they wanted to be dual mode? They could. Up to now, it's impossible. The entry point can be either ESM or CJS. But you have conditional exports. You can specify for import, use that file. For require, use that file. So now node fetch, if they wanted to, they just didn't want to, can have two entry points, one for CJS, for, for Dominique de Nicola to use, and one for all new style for all the ESM world to use and enable that slow migration through that five kilometer tunnel. And this helps build dual mode libraries. But there's more. Because the Webpack people and Rollup took it even further with, with the blessing of the Node.js working group on ESM. You can add more stuff, which Node.js totally ignores. You can add a browser entry and say, for CJS, it's this. For import, it's this. And for the browser, for Webpack and Rollup, it's this. So now you can have triple mode libraries can work in CJS, in ESM, and in the front end. And both Webpack and Rollup support this fully. You need a little bit of configuration, but my guess is that in a few months, even that configuration will go away because it'll be the standard way. And we're using it at Round for us today. We have packages that are isomorphic client libraries. Okay, and we do this. We actually do this. So what we're seeing is something amazing. It's one JavaScript, one module system. We have simplicity. Theoretically, your code can run in the browser and in Node.js, and if it's compatible, then it will run no transpiling, no tooling, no webpack. Everything will run. Everything complicated that we really complicated, like in the last five to 10 years, will become simple again. It's not that there's not going to be any tooling, but the base, there will be, there will always be tooling. But the baseline where we teach people about JavaScript and, and understand how JavaScript works, that will become simpler. And to recap, the exports mechanism allows defining specific entry points. This is great. But, and Node.js will use require or import based on whether it's coming from CJS or ESM. And they can be uh, conditional and defined differently for ESM, CJS, and the front end, Webpack, Rollup, and others. As I said. So are we there yet? Can we start migrating? This was, the, this was when, a year and a half ago. Yeah, no, yeah, no. This is so 2020. And the answer today is an emphatic yes. Start migrating. It'll take you a year, but start migrating, because in a year, in two years, you'll find that most of your packages have gone ESM only. And at Round Forest, we've been pure ESM for half a year now. Amazingly enough, there are almost no problems. Like, it works. Easily work, and the, the small ones are easily worked around. Visual Studio Code and WebStorm understand everything nicely. Refactoring and IntelliSense are even easier than back in the days. And even bundlers, as I said, are starting to support the whole thing. There are still problems. Two main problems is don't use Jest. Jest does not support Node.js ESM, so you can't use Jest. You can use any other test runner but Jest. Jest is taking their time. They have lots of problems because they're doing a lot of magic around the code. And magic and ESM is difficult. And if you're doing mocking, like proxy where you're doing mocking of require, that doesn't work. But other alternatives like test double do work if you do want to mock like imports. It, it, it does work. So how do I start? First of all, you can go to my blog. Uh, it'll be at the last uh, slide. Uh, I have a migration guide and talking about how ESM works. So feel free uh, to visit that. So let's recap the whole thing. ESM chose to break with the past. Full module with, with full modules in Babel TypeScript. ESM chose to, Node.js ESM chose to be compatible with browsers. And it has interoperability problems because it's async and CJS is sync, so it has interoperability problems between the two. But 
to solve these improperability problems, it's, it's promoting exports, which is a way to conditionally export based on what you, where you're coming from. And my guess is that this will usher an era of simpler tooling that will be, and everybody will be very, very happy. So yes, they're coming. Start now. Uh, last, I wanted to show a little video. Obviously, the video didn't work like for some reason, but here I have. Oh, oh, oh. Like. No, no. There we go. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the ten hours of gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears. Thank you very much for having me in Croatia.